The entire world is currently focused on Elon Musk's enterprise, SpaceX, and its significant achievements in space. They are working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on a totally reusable launch system capable of returning astronauts to the moon and allowing humans to colonize Mars. Furthermore, we can imagine a future in which starship travel can be used as a point-to-point -point mode of transportation on Earth. Recently in the process of preparing for orbital flight with Ship 20 and Booster 4, Elon Musk revealed changes to the design of Starship in the present as well as in the future. Those are really great improvements. Let's find out more about these improvements in today's episode. If you're new to our channel, we welcome you heartily. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of SpaceX's latest news. Now, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. First off, let's begin with the thermal protection system. While SpaceX's fleet of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets are partially reusable, Musk's goal is to make Starship fully reusable, a rocket that is more akin to a commercial airplane. One important piece of making Starship fully reusable is improving its durability to survive the intense process of re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Small hexagonal heat shield tiles are SpaceX's answer to that problem. With the previously shiny Starship 20 rocket now covered in thousands of the tiles, this is the first prototype of Starship with a full heat shield ever. The ship is covered almost entirely with heat tiles. Trailing edges would be needed on the parts of the hull next to the flaps as plasma would spill over the flaps along the hull. The heat shield goes around the nose, similar to what was present on the space shuttle. For the first time, we can see specialized and round tiles following the shape of the aft flap and nose cone. On August 6th, Musk noted that work on the tiles is about 98% done for Starship 20, as the remaining tiles are unique shapes requiring machining. And recently, when brought to Pad B to prepare for the upcoming test series, SpaceX employees continued to attach and fix the rest of the heat shield. Now it really looks smoother and more shiny. The next improvement is the design of Starship's forward flaps. Beyond a space shuttle style heat shield of blankets and ceramic tiles, the Starship upper stage is meant to achieve that reusability by descending through the atmosphere and landing unlike any other spacecraft, plane, or rocket ever flown. Instead of flying, gliding, or knifing through the atmosphere nose or tail first, Starship free falls perpendicular to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers, or around 10 to 20 miles, before aggressively flipping into a vertical orientation at the last second and landing propulsively on its tail. Now, according to Elon Musk, two of the four flaps that largely make that exotic maneuver possible are set for a small but significant redesign. Casper Rocket, or Stanley Creative, has provided a render of what Musk was trying to say or explain, with the nose flaps having moved further towards the top, and is apart by around 120 degrees. The multi-tech CEO said, Probably slightly further forward, smaller, more inward, no funny looking static arrow at top, as static arrow no longer directly in flow. Apparently, those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the components. Ironically, SpaceX's thermal protection team completed the installation of heat shield tiles on one of those forward flap aero covers for the first time ever in Ship 20, a structure and portion of heat shields that will apparently no longer be needed on future Starships. For now though, it looks like Ship 20 will attempt Starship's first orbital launch with its now outdated forward flaps. Depending on how far along Ship 21 production is, the next prototype could feasibly support that new flap design. The next Starship-related design change is the refueling process. This is a significant change because SpaceX's Starship spacecraft won't be able to make it all the way to the moon, never mind Mars, all by itself. To get into orbit and then continue its journey, each Mars or moon-bound Starship will have to meet up in orbit with its brethren in order to fuel up for the journey beyond Earth. Understanding the importance of that, in October of 2020, NASA awarded SpaceX a $53 million contract to perform a propellant transfer demonstration. 
Combining Starship's rapid reusability with orbital refilling is critical to economically transporting large numbers of crew and cargo to the Moon and Mars, SpaceX wrote in a tweet at the time. This is also easy to understand because with a reusable rocket, it takes almost all the fuel in the booster and the ship just to put something into orbit. And that is the point. There is barely any propellant left. There is just enough for the Starship to deorbit, aero break through the atmosphere using the skydiver or the belly flop maneuver and land. So if it wants to go for longer trips, it will definitely have to refuel. During a recent controversy with Blue Origin, Elon Musk revealed how many times he needed to refuel while on the moon. He said, Max of 8 to fill 1200 ton tanks of Lunar Starship. The mission to Mars is still a mystery. This is an image of how the Starship will be refueled while going into space, released by SpaceX in 2019. In less than two years, there's been a lot of design changes and improvements for both the ship and the booster. At the same time, SpaceX has changed plans for Starship's orbit refueling. Recently, in a video of Tim Dodd from Everyday Astronaut interviewing Elon Musk during the Starbase tour, they discussed the Starship refilling system. He also said, I'm not sure it will be the butt to butt, it might be something different. We switched the propellant full drain lines to the side, so coming from the side. So no butt to butt refueling, but side to side. One caveat here is they still refuel through their skirts, kind of like the old butt to butt, except using the new side skirt ports. The previous strategy was dramatically altered by this plan, which may be a fantastic but risky SpaceX idea. The butt-to-butt -butt seems to be more simply because it, it could be imagined the fluids flow downwards with a slight ullage push in one direction. With the new plan, they don't have that same balance advantage. Recently, a new render by a SpaceX enthusiast, Urk X, has shown the new Starship orbital refueling method as described by Elon Musk. And he shared this amazing 3D design showing how Starship side-to-side -side refueling works on top of the crewed ship and on the bottom of the cargo ship. It drew the approval of Elon Musk, who replied with two fire emojis. However, to prove it can ensure it works as planned, SpaceX will need to spend a lot more time and money to research and explore more. The last innovation we want to bring to you today is the next generation of the Raptor engine, the Raptor 2. Recently, Musk noted that SpaceX has produced parts of version 2 of Raptor, including the thrust chamber assembly. Raptor 2 will have a far cleaner appearance than Raptor 1 due to the removal of a huge amount of piping, according to Musk. In addition, Raptor 2 has a bigger throat, which reduces the area ratio, resulting in a 3 second fall in specific impulse, but a considerable gain in thrust. Despite the lower ISP, this permits booster engines to be more efficient because gravity losses are reduced. Raptor 2 will reach 230 tons of thrust at 298 bar main combustion chamber pressure. Once again, SpaceX is changing the game. Raptor 2 could help enable SpaceX's crewed mission to Mars, expected sometime this decade. These engines are doing things that no other has. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that he wants to be the pioneer who first successfully landed astronauts on the Red Planet. That will be a huge accomplishment for mankind. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us with what we do directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Once again, thank you so much for your support. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.